Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. I hope you all are having a fantastic day today. I have a very fun project I've been looking forward to for a couple weeks now. This beauty right here, this is an own root rose, a climbing rose from heirloomroses.com. They did send this to me, but if you all have been following me for a while, you know how much I love heirloomroses.com. I think they have the best roses on the market these days. And my two Eden climbing roses in the front yard uh, over my, oh, my rose arch, both of those roses are from heirloomroses.com and I have had the hands, the best success with those roses. They have performed beautifully for me. And I truly think that that is because of the way that Heirloom Roses does their roses. All of Heirloom Roses are own root roses. And what that means is that they do not graft any of their roses onto other rootstock, which is a very common practice for a lot of rose growers. So basically what they'll do is they'll take the rose that they want to grow and sell and they will graft it down here onto another rootstock that maybe is a little bit more vigorous or is a little bit more um, cold hardy or disease resistant but then there are problems with having a grafted rose uh, one of them is that you can get suckers from the roots that are not the rose that you were going for. It would just be coming from that own that old root stock, and so it would be that type of rose. The other problem with grafted roses is that if you live in a cold environment or you have a really rough winter and the rose dies all the way back to the ground during the, the winter, sometimes grafted roses will actually come up with the root stock rose. So the rose that you actually wanted will be gone and you'll have the root stock. So you could have this beautiful pink rose and then have have a really harsh winter it'll all die back and then the next season you think your rose is going growing well and for some reason you get a completely different color rose and that is that is what happens with grafted roses sometimes own root roses like the ones that come from heirloomroses.com also last longer they live longer because they're coming from their own roots they've been grown to to be able to handle life just a little bit better than the grafted roses which is exactly what what I want in a rose. So heirloomroses.com sent me out this beauty right here. This rose is a climbing rose, a very vigorous and disease resistant, which is key. If you all watched my rose tips video that I did a couple weeks ago, I'll link it down below. I truly think that going for disease resistant roses is the way to go. It just makes life so much easier and makes it so that you don't have to worry about that rose getting some type of disease that you will have to deal with in the future. So this rose is Kiss Me Kate, this beautiful pink, so many petals on this rose and it is supposed to be so incredibly fragrant with notes of citrus, apple, and raspberry. I had my eye on this rose once I went to Napa Van Winden's nursery with my friend Julio. They had the Kiss Me Kate rose there right next to another Eden Climber, which I already have in the front yard and I know and I love it. And so I was really excited to get my hands on this. So when Heirloom Roses offered to send me one, I just have to say, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. So Kiss Me Kate Climbing Rose is considered a medium climbing rose. It gets about seven feet tall and four feet wide. And my plan for her, Kiss Me Kate, her, is to actually have her climb over my greenhouse. Now, if it looks like I'm in a lot of shade, that is because I have my umbrella, my trusty umbrella right here. <laughs> I just have to do this during in the summer it just gets too hot and it's too bright so this is full sun this is a full sun spot which is a really good location for any rose you want any rose to have at least six hours of sun there are some roses that can handle a little bit more shade but the majority of the roses like as much sun as possible so I think kiss me Kate is gonna be really happy right here by my greenhouse and I'm hoping to train it over at the greenhouse I think that this is gonna be perfect because during the winter and early early spring when the greenhouse needs most of the sun 
the, this rose is not going to have much foliage. You know, I'm going to cut it back and prune it back. Um, so it'll be perfect. And then when I don't really use my greenhouse during the summertime, like now, hopefully it will be covered with beautiful Kiss Me Kate blooms and the foliage. And maybe that will make this greenhouse a little bit shadier and a little bit more usable during the hot summer months. So when you get a rose from heirloomroses.com, just know that they are going to look small. They're going to look small because they are own root roses, which they sell first year. Heirloom Roses sells first year own root roses. As compared to other rose growers that sell second year grafted roses. So a second year grafted roses is gonna get, you know, uh, immediate payoff, right, first year. But Heirloom Roses says if you're patient, by year three, your own root rose is gonna catch up and might even you know, soar past that grafted rose. And you're gonna be so much happier because the rose is gonna be so much healthier because it's an own root rose. So you do have to be patient if you order a rose through heirloomroses.com. But I kind of think of roses as like a long-term planting investment. So to me, it's worth it to do it right the first time. Now, if you look at my greenhouse right here, you can see that it is on concrete the whole way. Just over here on this side, I, ha I do have some soil, but it's very close to this north facing fence. And I was afraid if I planted the rose there, it wouldn't get enough sun. So I opted to plant it on this side and I'm going to plant it in this planter right here. A climbing rose is not recommended normally to plant in containers or planters. A climbing rose and then a large shrub rose. Both of those, you kind of, if you can, you wanna plant them in the ground. So I do wanna tell all of you that um, I know what I'm doing here isn't the best thing for the rose, but I'm gonna try it out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna watch this rose, this climbing rose here in this container. If I notice that the rose grows, you know, it's probably gonna grow really nicely the first couple of years. If I notice that it's not blooming as vigorously as it did before, I'll know that it's probably time to bump up the pot or put it in the ground somewhere. You know, I'll, I'll kind of be watching it, but I am planning to repot it every two to three years just to make sure I'm refreshing the soil. And when I do repot it, I'm probably gonna root prune it too, which is another thing that you can do with roses to keep them small. When I was looking for a pot, I actually got this one from Home Depot. I really love the lattice look of it and it's pretty lightweight. Um, what I was looking for is I was looking for a pretty tall pot. You want as big of a pot as you can get and you want it to be pretty tall so that there is lots of room for this rose's roots. I think this rose is gonna be pretty happy at least for a couple years in this pot as I grow it up and over my greenhouse. And then if I have to move it to a bigger pot or if I even have to move it to that stock tank right there so the roots can kind of spread out, I'm open to doing that as well. But I thought for at least a couple years, I'll be able to keep it in this nice tall container and I think it should be pretty happy. All right, so let's get to planting. The first thing I did earlier this morning Morning, just about an hour ago is I watered my rose. I got it in the mail. I received it in the mail from Erwin Roses about two days ago. I watered it when I got it home and then knowing that I am going to plant it today, I made sure to deeply water that, water this rose. And that way I know the rose is going to be nice and hydrated and ready to be transplanted. So when I watered it, all I did is I watered it thoroughly and made sure that I saw water coming out the bottom of this container. My next step is preparing my soil. I got out my wheelbarrow and I added in some really good quality planting mix over here. And then over here, I, I put in some compost, some good organic compost. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix these two together. The compost is gonna add lots of nutrients that that rose is gonna love, but then also it's going to keep the, the moisture level in the soil a little bit more, which is really important when you live in a hot area like I do, and you're gonna be putting a rose in a container. You wanna make sure it doesn't it doesn't dry out too quickly. Okay, and I'm just gonna fill up this container with the soil mixture that I made. 
And something really important to remember when you're planting own root roses from like from heirloomroses.com, you wanna make sure that you don't use a planting mix that has granular fertilizer in it. Uh, planting mixes sometimes will mix in some granular fertilizer. They'll say it'll feed your plant, you know, all season long. The problem with that is the granular fertilizer will actually burn the baby roots of the heirloom rose. Uh, heirloomroses.com doesn't want you to use granular fertilizer on your roses for the first year. So only liquid fertilizer. I'll show you, I'll fertilize this rose once I get it planted up. But when you pick out your, your soil, when you're planting your rose, just make sure it doesn't have any additives like granular fertilizer in it. So once you've got your container mostly full, you're gonna put in your rose. Now, the heirloom roses, they come with new baby roots. You'll see they're even coming out the bottom right here, but they're not gonna be root bound. So there's no need to break up at the base of this. You can kind of just stick it straight into that hole. And because it is an own root rose, you don't have to worry about planting it too shallow because there is no uh, graft site or union site on this rose. So actually planting it deeper is actually kind of better because that is going to encourage root growth around this rose. Um, and it, you know, it's just, it's really going to help that rose be healthier and stronger for the long run. So I am going to make sure that I'm planting this rose plenty deep. There we go. Tucking all this good compost around it. And this container does have a drainage hole, which is very important. And I am going to hook this whole container up on drip so that I know it's gonna get plenty of regular watering and I'm not gonna to forget to water it <laughs> and cause the rose to suffer. Okay, and Kiss Me Kate is all tucked in and ready to start growing. So like I said, I am gonna hook this rose up on drip so I don't have to worry about watering it. But what I do have to worry about is feeding it. And for the first year of roses, from heirloomroses.com or own root roses, you want to avoid granular fertilizer, just like I was talking about before. So the reason you wanna avoid granular fertilizer is it's just too hot for the baby roots on the own root rose. There's too much nitrogen in it and it's gonna burn those roots and it'll actually void the one year warranty that heirloomroses.com has on all their roses. So what you wanna use is you want to use a liquid fertilizer, preferably a seaweed fertilizer. Now, that is for the first year, you only wanna use liquid, but for roses growing in pots, you probably wanna think about just using a liquid forever. And that is because when you fertilize in pots and you fertilize with granular fertilizer, there, all, there are salts and solids that can actually accumulate and build up in that container because there's really no place for it to go. If you're uh, putting granular fertilizer in a rose that's in the ground, it can kind of get dissolved into the surrounding soil. The only place that it can stay is inside the container. So again, it might get too hot, too much nitrogen for that that rose in the container. So what I am planning to do is just to use liquid seaweed fertilizer on this rose as long as it is here in the container. And I'm going to do that. I am doing that with all my container roses at this point. So I've always used this Neptune Har Neptune's Harvest rose and flowering food. It's worked so incredibly well for my Eden roses out front. And so I might as well keep going with this. So since I've planted Kiss Me Kate up, I'm going to put some of this into here. It smells absolutely terrible, but it is worth it. I know the rose loves it. And then I will water the rose in with my fertilizer water.
Okay, so I've got Kiss Me Kate all potted up. She's got food, she's got water, and once I move this umbrella, she's gonna have plenty of sun. So one thing I wanted to remind you all is that own root roses, such as those from heirloomroses.com, they follow the gardening adage of sleep, creep, leap. The first year they're going to sleep or seem like they're sleeping because there's going to be a lot of root growth going on underneath the soil, which is exactly what you want for your roses. The second year they're going to creep, they're going to grow slowly, and the third year they're going to leap and it's going to grow absolutely crazy. Now here's the funny thing. I have my Eden climbing roses in the, my front garden over my arch from heirloomroses.com. They're only in their second year and it already feels like they're leaping. They are on the top of that climbing rose arch. So really, I cannot wait to see what they're gonna look like the third year when they are leaping. So the other thing is when you get your rose from heirloomroses.com, it's gonna look like a bunch of sticks. It's not gonna look like a rose. And they do that on purpose. They actually defoliate or take off all the leaves of their roses before they send them out in the mail to get delivered to you. They do that on purpose because defoliating their roses actually prevents them from wilting and puts less stress on them during the delivery process. So when you get them out of that box, they're, they're gonna look like they don't have any leaves on them. And again, heirloomroses.com did that on purpose. As soon as you get it planted up, get it some food, get it some water and some good healthy soil, that rose is gonna start growing very quickly for you. So I wanna encourage you all to check out heirloomroses.com, not only for their rose selection, but also for their education. They have a, a spot on their website that's called Learn. If you click on that, there are tons and tons and tons of videos and articles all about growing roses. And honestly, this is where I learned to grow roses. I am a relatively new rose grower, rose gardener, and the most that I learned, I learned absolutely the most from this website. It is just a wealth of information. So I wanna encourage you all to check that website out just whether you're a new rose gardener or whether you've been growing roses for years and years and years there's a lot of really good information in there so i want to thank heirloom roses for sending out this rose they also sent me out another rose teasing georgia which i'm really excited to get growing as well um, they did give me a coupon code or a discount code for all of you 20 percent off any rose on the website you want to use the code dig 20 and that is good until june June 30th. So hopefully you all are watching this in the next week so you can use that code. I will also put a link in the description down below that will take you straight to heirloomroses.com. So I will keep you all updated on Kiss Me Kate. I hope you all enjoyed this and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today.